What was it like working with a young KL at that time? And did you know that he was going to be legendary in his own right? You know what? To be honest, I saw the genius in him. And what I mean by that, like, most people go to school to learn how to work these boards and the drum machines. This dude would open it. And he would get something new. And I'm like, man, can't wait to, you know, you got to go to school for this. And he just, he even no care, he just look at you. <laughs> Don't say much. And just sitting there and... He sit there two, three days messing with it. And then, bam, he, he making it do shit that they didn't even know it could do. You feel what I'm saying? <laughs> and I'm watching that, man. And then we had this dream with this sound. Yeah. You know, because my thing was when I was in New, you know, New York a couple of times and I freestyle against dudes and, you know, and they were on their thing with, you know, when they find out, they like, Psh, you from New Orleans, man, number murder in Mardi Gras. That hit hard. Damn. And then... When Outkast got booed and Andre's still strong, yeah. Sal got something to say. Yeah. Now nah, it was personal. Like, nah, whatever I could do, I won't be part of taking taking it from y'all. Even though I respect it yeah. in New York because that's the father to me. Yeah. You know, to me, hip hop got the father's New York. Mm -hmm. West Coast is that knucklehead son that always gets in trouble. <laughs> Midwest, the quiet son, you play with him, it's going to be a problem. That's right. Southern son is the one that's cool, respectful. But we'll deal with you. Come on you know, now. But they work harder because they always that little brother. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And and I just felt like, yeah, I'm, I want to be a part of that. And KL, he had this sound and we had this this thing like, what if, like Onyx, slow beats, but laid back, UGK and stuff, but rowdy and crazy like Onyx. What's and, up? and our way. And he was on to something, bro. Linking up with P. And forming no limit. I mean, what was that like early on when everybody mm -hmm. was starting to get together and mm -hmm. it was looking like it might be something, but nobody was quite sure what it would be. It's crazy. We coming back here and this this is the biggest show so far, right? Yeah. When I re met Pete, because I always knew Pete, I used to follow him and the God, God bless the dead, his brother Kevin around the basketball coach, because basketball was my love for real. Yeah. Not like some of you know you rappers they think it's <laughs> could play ball now. Nah, we did it for real. Okay. You know, okay. And so Marriott Marquise, Luke and and that row fighting, doing the Jack the Rapper. Yeah. That's where I met Pete at in this city. You know, and once we got up there, you know, he he was <clears throat> he was like honest to God, he was like come up, do a song. Get you twenty five hundred, like got that, you know, in my pocket. But it's legal. Yeah, my mama was on some mama religious Southern woman. Mm -hmm. You know, don't bring after what you went through. Because when I got in trouble, she took everything I bought for her mm -hmm. and threw it. I gave it away. What? She didn't want drug money stuff in yeah. there. Yeah, and so she was like, bring legal money in there, you know, and you can help me, whatever. And so uh, we went up there, man, and watching him. You want to talk about college? Couldn't show you marketing and then a man couldn't show you know they say how farmers work hard mm -hmm. and this dude to this day i still don't sleep three four hours this dude watching him and what he do in the method to his madness you know in the way he can mentally on a corporate level manipulate i watched this dude man make walmart bid against target right in front of him now you talking about you know i'm talking about walmart we talking about big walmart yep. target and manipulate them where I give you 10% off if you are in 60000 a ghetto D. Well, more like, okay, well, okay, we'll get 75000 if you give us 12% off. And mm -hmm. they watch him, he watch him manipulate them to do that. And the hard work, man, the crash course I got, of, you know, because I drove him around for a while, mm -hmm. you know, because we was all in the apartment up there, me, Mia. Uh, Moby and KL, we had all the thing, three niggas in the broad, three yeah. in, trying to get away from that word, but three ends <laughs> in the broad. And we watched it. And mm -hmm. we went through we went through a lot, man. Mia lost at, during that time, Mia lost her parents, mm -hmm. best friend. You know, I lost my cousin, KL lost his, you know, but P always made sure y'all all right, stay up here. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and watching him do what he's doing and then he he wasn't afraid to tell you. Because I was like, man, why are you doing that? Well, why you did that? Why are we running over here and we selling, you selling out in these stores? And, you know, he was like, no, this this right here, the Z40 uncle, you know what I'm saying, who's legendary in the Bay with, the, you know, music and the record stores. And P worked with him. Mm -hmm. And whereas he yeah, tried to hustle other radio, I mean, record stores, right, yeah. to get more. But he was like, no, because you stay good with him. I'm learning from him mm -hmm. like you learning from me. 
And so that's how it was. It was it was hard work, man. And and you know, I learned a lesson also about with him, with about patience. You know what I'm saying? With him, he gonna get at it. Everybody think they see him moving, moving, moving. That dude sit still sometime. That dude used to sit still and you know, he don't even be talking. Mm. And then he'll come he get up, he said, Come on, let's go. And then boom, we gonna do my commercial. He done figured out we gonna put we gonna put a hearse on gold D's and when the door open up, you, you know, your C D gonna flip out. But first he was like, I said, Man, I ain't getting that hearse. I'm not getting that hearse. <laughs> like, no, bro. We gonna drive, pull up, get out, open the back door. Yeah. And I'm like, ain't nobody back there. And he like, bruh, it's serious. <laughs> and it's like that's the method to his madness. You know, yeah. he he he's he's so intelligent and so driven where he always think five steps ahead. And I learned that because he just used to sit there sometimes, B. Just don't say nothing. Four ends in the broad, man. That early crew right there. Mm -hmm. What was it like with y'all being the nucleus trying to figure out ways to blow all the way up, man? I mean, was it one of those situations that we ain't getting a prayer time in this thing? Mm -hmm. Or was the camaraderie so strong in that place that you knew that there was no place to go but up? When you're around Mia, who already was that star, in New Orleans, right? And the world needed to hear. Yeah. But she was also, like today, I don't say me, I say me when we talking, but when I address her as mommy, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Or ma. Yeah. And she knew the things we was going through and you watching, you know, all of us cool, you know, cause Mo Moby and Kale are, are, are producers. Mm -hmm. And you know, producers back then were producers, producers. So yeah. it's egos in it. Yeah. You know, I'm do mine's over here, you do yours. We can speak, it's cool. Yeah. To watch them come together. And Mia, the way she did it, the old Southern way, she cooked. Like mm. Moby was getting to know KL, and KL is quiet. But Moby knew me from, he used to mess with a chick that everybody as a little youngster liked. You know what I'm saying? Grown woman, everybody loved her. Mm -hmm. You know, wanted to get with it. And then I walk up and see this little skinny dude coming with the big old chain on and the starter jacket. And so I knew him from that. Mm -hmm. And to see them two, and Mia would cook every day, and we had to all sit there. She'd sit there and she'd talk, but what she was doing was making us sit there and, and bond. Uh, yeah, you know, and you know, and it was it was it was something that when you look back at it, man, because it was kind of tough for us in a way because P had some artists already, mm -hmm. but you know those things wasn't going however they were going or whatever. So we knew that love was only gonna be up in this room. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and C and C Murder was coming. Free C, man. Free my dude. Yes, uh, innocent man. But come on. he was coming in and out. You know what I'm saying? C was in and out, out of Oakland, out, out, you know, we was at Haywood. And, you know, you would see Silk and God rest the dead. Big Ed was always there. Yeah. You know, and Big Ed was another person, very, very religious. Mm -hmm. You know, he was Muslim and but very down to earth and good dude. And him and me are bonded. So for me, in my little wild side, still doing little things I would do, this woman would catch me mm. and, and catch me like, I know what you're doing. Stop. Yeah. Ma, what you talking about? I know you. She said, Kel, ain't, I know who did it. I'm like, oh. <laughs> So, you know, and it, it got to a point where she almost made me be a man like I'm supposed to be. Yeah. Even if I had problems, we had problems home with our girlfriends or whatever. You know what I'm saying? She's, she would sit there talking and say, let me get on the phone with her. They'd be home, you know. It was it was family, and I think that's what made us more special than anybody. You know, we struggled together, you know, grind together, lived together, ate together, you know. 